Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV. Welcome back to 2014. We trust you've had a great festive season. For those of you that did celebrate Christmas, that you had a good Christmas. If you did not celebrate Christmas, that you had a good festive season anyway. And of course, a happy and safe new year. Um, and that you hopefully weren't uh, connected or in any way associated to any of those tragedies on the road. But it is the super... Uh, rugby tournament that is going to be catching uh, fire soon, should we call it that, in Super 15 as well as in Club Rugby. So there's two Super 15 structures almost happening in the Club Rugby space. But Cape Rugby TV, happy to be back on the channel and so much to talk about. We've got uh, Community Challenge to talk about. That's that new structure that's happening at Western Province. There's four teams playing against Boerland. Uh, we've got the Community Cup, we've got the Varsity Cup, we've got Super 15, we've got the Vodacom Cup, we've got some Sevens tournaments. And of course, uh, don't forget Bob Skins had his Tens tournaments happening out there as well. We'll talk about that a little bit and a lot of local sevens tournaments but uh, on the panel with me uh, tonight at least uh, no stranger to the Cape Rugby TV show from Violets and also on the uh, rugby panel at Western Rams Rugby Football Union let's welcome Riaz Khan hello Riaz welcome back hi there thank you JP thank you very much you're looking forward to another 2014 season definitely a good 2014 can't wait for the rugby to start club rugby <laughs> just gets better and better eh? every single year <laughs> and of course uh, on the panel with me also I think it's the first time you joined us uh, yes. Faisal Felton the uh, manager of amateur rugby at Western Province hello Faisal uh, good evening JP long long overdue it's great that we've got you here yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people have been wanting to know, like, who's the guy that administers everything? Because everybody always, <laughs> I think it's probably, it's, you're probably the guy that people swear at the most of the union. The most, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, behind his back and in front of <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think probably a little bit more behind his yeah. back because... Uh, <laughs> but anyway, folks, as I said, there's lots of, uh, lots of for us to talk about. Let's start off now with the George Sevens, the results there. And there you see it, the Leopards, well, they came out uh, on top against the uh, Eye of the Tigers. The Living Ball played against the Sharks, 27-22, good victory for them. And then in the uh, place playoffs, uh, Kenya, 35-15 against the SVD Eagles. And then Samurai, 33-17. Um, um, I think the Samurai team, also maybe a Kenyan side. Do you guys know? Is it a Kenyan side? I'm not sure. And then, of course, anyway, so those are the results there. And there we see the George Seven Samurai squad. Now there you see it. Those are the guys who had such a fantastic tournament. Hands and hearts, 26-15 over uh, Evergreen. Well, a good result there. We know that hands and hearts have been doing fantastic. They've been playing a lot of sevens, entering almost every tournament that's out there. And we know that they're also going to be entering the uh, Strand Pioneer Sevens that's happening on the, uh, I think it's on the 25th over at uh, Abattoir in the Strand. A lot of 12 clubs managed to have entered out there. Aria has lots of sevens tournaments. You know Tariq van der Ross quite well. I think you played for your club at Violets for a little bit. He used to be one of our ex-captains at Violets as well. Yeah. Yeah. And he's doing, like I t said previously on one of the previous shows, Tariq is doing exceptional work in the Aldeburg region. Um, those clubs are coming together quite brilliantly now. And I mean, the initiatives in the area is, is wonderful. And he's, he's at, the, at the pinnacle of that now. Himself and Ruben Rafil, uh, they're doing great work out there. And he's, also, he's taking quite a good advantage of the fact that uh, to use the sevens, and, 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 and Faisal will come in here with, your, with this a bit as well, is that there's been a lot of planning about making sure that we keep rugby active for those that are not maybe playing the Varsity Cup or the Community Cup on the Challenge, they've got to, you want to keep them active. You want to get rugby memberships to join up as early in the year as possible. So it's a good phase. It's a good thing that we've got this Sevens rugby that's happening. We've got the West Bank Sevens, the Strand Pioneer Sevens. There's the Super Sevens, the um, Extreme Sevens of Ricky Peterson. So a lot of Sevens stuff before the guys get to play proper rugby. I think it helps a lot with the pre-season training and that thing, you know, mm. getting the guys active, getting them involved, you know, before moving on to the 15-man getting them involved and active in sevens rugby and that. But it's also nice from an administrative point of view because it means that the club stays active. You don't have to wait six months again before you get your chairman back and your president back. I mean, they literally had a two, three, four week break and they're back in the picture. And that, that helps you from an administrative point of view. Definitely, JP. It helps us a lot in terms of, you know, the registrations, getting the guys registered early and at there, you know, not waiting a week before the season starts and, um, you know, coming to register the players and that. But also knowing what the club has, you know, in terms of the amount of players at the club. Yeah, yeah. So Tell us a little bit about the registration process. I mean, you've got the sevens structure now, but of course your main registration process is about the league. Correct. So what is happening now is the registration process, um, you know, come Thursday we'll, have, we'll be having a meeting with our clubs. Uh, the top three divisions, and then on the 22nd we'll be having another meeting with the remainder of the clubs. Um, at this meeting, you know, we'll be talking about the registrations. Uh, we, we've 
been encouraging clubs to, uh, you know, to start looking at updating information on, uh, you know, the players and that, their yeah, profiles yeah. and that, and registering the players as early as possible. So we are hoping that, you know, the start of the new season, you know, most of the players will be registered early and that, there. and like, you know, our system now, registrations is done online. So there's no need to come into the office anymore. Uh, clubs can do it, you know, at their own, you know, convenience, mm. uh, in their own time. And so we try to make it easier for the clubs. We're, well. we're going we're gonna to touch on that now, the online system, um, Scrum It, uh, where the players can now register online, which is a great, uh, a great innovation. It's long overdue that we've, we've got the clubs to do this. Um, and, and finally, it looks like, I think you guys did a lot of road shows last year where you were physically showing every club yeah. how to do it. And uh, Rios is a little bit technologically challenged, so you had to go <laughs> out. <laughs> did you have a road show, Rios? Um, yeah, we did. And um, they came out, they showed us exactly how the Scrum It system works. Yeah. And, and like you said, the innovation grounding around the Scrum It system is amazing. Because the things you can do, you can update player profiles. You can actually put into the system when a player starts at your club, so that you can actually track his 50th game, his 100th game, his how many tries he scored for the season. All of these stats you can actually put on the Scrum It system now. Before we had to manually write these things down, you lose it, you know, files from year to year. Everything now is on the system. Uh, it's amazing. And it's, and it's changing all the time. I mean, Yaku, the guy who's dealing with it, he's changing things constantly all the time. It's a dynamic environment now. Yeah. So it's brilliant, yeah. Which, of course, helps us from a media point of view because we want to give as much exposure to club rugby right. players and if we want to know how many players, uh, how many games a player's played or which club he's played for yeah. or who's the coach at a certain club, then from us, from me, which helps us to create more exposure for the clubs. The onus, but the onus, however, still falls on the member at the club and the club people to obviously put that information into the system. Yeah. So the, it's still with the clubs to do that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Are the clubs participating, Faisal? I mean, what sort of percentage-wise are, are you I would seeing success? Definitely seeing success. I mean, in the past, I mean, everybody that knows that those registrations would come into the office. They would start from around about February. Uh, I mean, we'll go into probably the first, second week of the, you know, when the season starts and at the registering players. I would say last year with registrations, I did not one registrations. All the registrations was done by the clubs. Right. So right. we've registered a total of 4,000 new players last year. And every uh, registration, the clubs did themselves in that. 4,000 new yeah. rugby right. players last year. How many cl players do you anticipate will drop out this year? Uh, that's one of the challenges that we face and I think with us, you know, we talk about the registration system, but the system that we've built is there to help and assist the clubs in terms of managing the clubs better. Yeah. Um, you know, that was one of the challenges that we faced last year was we've had 4,000 new players, but the growth hasn't been there in terms of the amount of teams that mm. we've got. We still have the same amount of teams. And with the system, we're hoping now that we can identify these problems and together with the clubs, look and see how we can make and grow Club Rugby and make it strong and make it better in that. Because we're talking about an average number of registered players being 15 to 22,000. You get 4,000 new. Every year, a few more drops. I suppose it's too early for us to tell Correct, yeah. how many, but, but it's during this year that you'll know exactly which players are active players. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. what will happen is prior to the season starting, now the club will go and activate their players. Uh, identify the players that will, you know, that have signed up and have indicated that they will be playing this season. So that will then help us and see exactly how many active members we've got at the club. And of course, um, okay, let's let's talk a little bit about about the registration process itself. Uh, is there a deadline for registration? Um, the registrations have opened, so the clubs can start registering players online and that there. The clubs have been given the usernames and passwords, so it's for them to go online and start registering and that. Uh, deadline, there is no deadline. The 31st of, Mar uh, of May is, uh, is obviously the cutoff date for registrations and new players and that. The only restriction when it got, with regards to registration is the players have got to be 18 years on the 1st of January. Okay, so once you've registered at a club, you've got to stay at that club for the year. That's what all it means in terms of cutoff time. But if you want to join a club, say in August, you can still go to the club, knock on the door and say, I'd like to come and play social rugby. You can still, after, at the end of, after May, you can still, yeah. You can still go. Because that was one of the confusing things in the past. People yeah. thought they confused this transferring of club story. Uh, I know you've got a word for it. Um, the remittance or the repossession or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was one of the things. People thought, no, it's too late. I'm not a player. I think it was the 31st of May that last yeah, year. There was a cutoff point. The cut point. But the public thought, well, I can't play now. Yeah, no, you it know, doesn't work like that. It doesn't new work members, like that. New members in the community still want to join up with the clubs after that cutoff date is fine. Yeah. As long as they're not moving from one club to another yeah. after okay. the cutoff date. Because yeah. I think that's, that's vitally important for people to know. I mean, you still want to do rugby even if you're not a competitive player. You're a social player. You played it for, for, for health purposes. Yeah. Uh, you 
don't want to join a gym, you'd rather join a rugby club, is it's not a, the cutoff point of 31st of May is not about um, uh, it's not about playing rugby. It's about the fact that once you join a club, you can't then to shift to another club. You're at that club for the year, and once you've registered in that yes. period before the 31st of May, then that that's it. If, yeah. if I can it also yeah. Yeah. That's fine. sorry. Uh, also, it also applies to three weeks before the season starts. So our season starts on the 5th of April. And so three weeks prior to that, if you've played for a club, you sort of bound to that club. So you can't move to another club once you've played for the club. Okay, I'm going to repeat that for us because I think that's quite an important point. Three weeks before the season starts, yeah. uh, if you've played for a club, you're bound to that club. So you cannot move to another club after that, uh, after that uh, cut-off date. Okay, so friendlies. You've played a friendly matches, for the yeah. club? Even a friendly. If you've played yeah. only a friendly, obviously yeah, it's a pre friendly. It's pre-season, pre yeah. Yeah, yeah. The reason why they brought that rule in with the cut-off for May as well, there's certain competitions in other areas and regions that end on a certain time. So if you allow those players to then move after the 31st, they can then pass to certain teams because their leagues have ended. So for so a, a typical example would be, say, the Varsity Cup. You go and play a Varsity Cup team, um, but now you come and you, you, you finish with the Varsity Cup yeah. and you're playing for, let's say, for example, UWC in the Varsity Cup. You just say, no, 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 I'm finished with the Varsity yeah, Cup because it was a lacquer exciting tournament and the Oaks were paying me and there was travel and transport and it was a lacquer jewel. Okay, thank you very much. I'm finished with the Varsity Cup. I'm now going to False Bay. Yeah, but I think not, also, yeah, not going to work. Not going to work. But one of also the main factors is that a team is busy with preparations and planning and that there. You can't have, you know, guys the Friday before you play on a Saturday decide, no, we're not going to play. We're going to go play for another club. So the idea is then to help and assist the clubs with preparation yeah. and that there. Yeah, yeah. And you see, these are the little practical things that one doesn't often think about at ground level. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the public maybe look at it from outside and go, well, that's unfair. Yeah. But there is a practical reason. Okay, that, so this, yeah. this is very important for us to know. So there's two important dates there that, that, that need to be known is that... Um, well, the main date is you, you, you need to register at a club. Once you're at that club, uh, three weeks before the season, you can't move. And then the 31st of May, um, cut, off cut, registrations. Off cut off for registrations. Cut off for registrations, but it's not to say you can't go still play rugby. Yeah. No, I think the 31st of May, what we're going to remember is that that's, a, that's for players that haven't played. They haven't played at a club, and now they, you know, they were injured, and now they decide they want to go play. Uh, they played for Violets last year, and now they want to go play for Primroses this year. They've still got until you know 31st of May to decide where they want to play. Okay. If you've played a match, then only then you need to get permission, you know, from the executive of right. the province uh, to move in there. But as we said, it is it is a 12-month season. So if you've never played rugby before, or you've just come out of school and you haven't registered, and you're only waking up in June or July, it's not to say you can't still play rugby. But we're going to cover that again a little bit later. I think one of the things we can come back to though in, in future episodes also is maybe show some online visuals of the Scrummit system um, where we actually showcase the Scrummit uh, registration system on, on TV so you can see how it works. So if you're a club player, a fan or administrator, you can actually see what's happening behind the scenes. So that's, that's very exciting. Folks, we're going to take an ad break. When we come back, we'll start taking a look at some of the other action in and around Western Bromps Club Rugby. We'll be back with you in a sec. You've just joined us. Um, it is our first show of 2014, and we know you've been dying to have uh, more rugby on, <laughs> on the scene. Um, uh, hopefully, you enjoyed the Christmas uh, special when we when we put it on. We had uh, Peter Yerster and Rob Wagner and Danny Jones, and we heard the inside track of what's happening at Western Bronze Rugby. The Stormers, are of course, away on a, um, call it a uh, training camp at the moment. They're out in the Armanus Horston area, and we expect that. Uh, there's going to be lots of fans at uh, Horston. Of course, training day, open day was there today um, in Horston. And of course, lots of fans went out there and they had a really, really, really good time. Let's quickly take a look at some of the Community Cup fixtures. But of course, the tragic news, and I'm very surprised that um, this wasn't announced earlier on. We only found out about this from a Cape Rugby point of view, and no, no big th thing was made of it. But we really should have known about this sooner, is Tigerberg are out of the uh, Community Cup. So there's only one team that's playing in the Community Cup from Western Province this year. The, uh, it looks like the wild cards have come from Borland or SV Adir or some of the other clubs um, in a, unions in and around the country. Who knows how that was picked? But anyway, Tigerberg is not playing in the Community Cup, although everybody thought that Tigerberg was a foregone conclusion and would be in the Community Cup. So the only one that's flying the flag for Western Province Rugby then in the Community Cup will be Hamilton's. Let's take a look now at the Hamilton's uh, Rugby Club fixtures in the Community Cup. Their first game is going to be up against Sishin at uh, Green Point. It's, of course, at the Hamilton's home ground. And then they'll be playing against uh, West Bank, playing away in Malmesbury. Hamilton's are then up against Shumba Ferros. That's uh, also a home ground advantage for Hamilton's. And then in Rustenburg, they'll be playing against 
against the Rustenburg Impalas. So um, five games on the cards there for Hamilton's playing the Community Cup. And it uh, looks like three games at home and then uh, two games away. Of course, they start off with a bye. So uh, we'll, we'll keep you updated on that and we'll also get you the dates on those fixtures. Um, Faisal, any idea why we didn't get uh, Tigerberg into the Community Cup? Uh, is that something we should not speculate on? We just leave it up to Sire to work out? Yeah, I think that is something, you know, that's out of our hands and that, the, um, you know, they've got a comp com competitions committee that uh, looks at, uh, you know, choosing the wild card and that there. Um, as, as you say, it's a wild card. Uh, it's not definite of who's going who's gonna to be in. From the union side, we you know, we've submitted and we've put forward some names yeah. and obviously it's out of our it's hands. It's a bit of a pity though, eh? I think so. I think it's, 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 a, it's a big pity for us and that they you know, um, not having Tigerberg there. Uh, you know, I think from our side, you know, Cape Town Rugby, uh, We've got a good following. I mean, we were, we, were quite fo we were quite ready. We were quite ready to follow yeah. Hamilton's and Tigerberg and, you know, carry the Western Province flag through through into the community. This is the old uh, SA Club Rugby Champs. Yeah. You know? I think what, what happened was in previous years, um, Western Province did get the wild card. Um, so Club almost got the wild card last year. Yeah. And I think the year before as well. So I think maybe that's the reason why Saru maybe thought they'd give it to one of the other unions this year. Yeah, but that's not going to stop us from complaining about it. No, no, obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, I think, I mean, we must raise our flag and, yeah. you know, we must constantly complain about yeah. it. Because <laughs> the more we have, then, the, you know, the better. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so, you know, we, anyway, so best of luck to Hamilton's there. We'll be following your progress. In fact, Hamilton's will be the team that we follow then for the Community Cup because Hamilton's will be carrying the flag for Western Province and we wish them the very best of luck. We'll get uh, Anton Wilmer, the coach of Hamilton's, as well as, of course, our... Uh, uh, our sidekick uh, and um, uh, I don't know ball carrier muscle grunter and supermodel Morgan Newman <laughs> who uh, will be joining us on the show I think next week and tell us also a little bit more about the community cup so a lot of, a lot of action there so that's the community cup um, some competitions coming up soon so get your cell phones handy Evox Advanced Nutrition will give you the before the during and the after product competition so you get a chance to win yourself a super carbo a rapid recovery as well as the uh, pre-training cytocrank those are the three products that you need if you're getting ready for for uh, rugby right now but if we just look at that uh, the community cup uh, Tigerberg of course now will shift their their focus completely to the community challenge so the community challenge is another, another event that's very exciting and uh, we will touch on base on that right now if you've got your cell phones Andy, the number that you needed to text there was 33280. I'm just going to reach down here. Okay, so we'll start off. Uh, the Super Carbo is one of your products that you can get. Uh, rapid recovery is what you'll use afterwards. And then the pre-training is the uh, Cytocrank. Okay, so there you see it. So the Cytocrank, so from your side, which would be, I think, left to right, although it's hard to tell on TV. Uh, the first one that you want is the Cytocrank. It'll be this one here. All right, I feel like I'm playing drums here. Cytocrank, this is the first part. You'll use this before training. The Stormers use this pre-training to get themselves a good kick, a good boost. You can use this before a gym. You can use it before a run. You can use this uh, before a practice session. So Cytocrank is your pre-training drink. And then your during, if you were even a cycling for three or four hours, or if you're playing a rugby game, or if you're going to gym, then your Super Carbo is your during training little top-up drink. It's like uh, your energy drink. And then afterwards, most importantly, the most important of all the products that you need out there, any club that's playing, any school that's playing, any team that's playing, any athlete that's in a gym doing any sort of sport, you've got to think about recovery. And that's where the rapid recovery comes in. And this is, of course, used by all of the Western Province Rugby and the Stormwinds players, from club rugby players to school rugby players to the Institute, the Academy, and, of course, Vodacom Cup, Super 15, all use these three products and the rapid recovery must be the king of of course not in the protein space now but must be the king of the products because the rap the recovery is the most essential part when it comes to any form of exercise you want to re recover properly before you exercise again let's take a look now at uh, some of those uh, options there as we see it before during and after just sms your name and answer to double three two eight oh the question we're asking you is who is the official sports nutrition supplier to uh, Western Bronze Rugby and the DHL Stormers. It's very easy. Just tell us who is the four official sports nutrition supplier to Western Bronze Rugby and the DHL Stormers. SMS your name and the answer to 33280 and you'll be able to win for yourself uh, the uh, three-way hamper. So those are your Evox products, 33280. The key word there is, of course, the answer. Who is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Bronze Rugby and the DHL Stormers? Who is the official supplier? Western Bronze Rugby, DHL Stormers. Eh? 
I'm not going to tell you the name. I'm not going to tell you the name, okay? <laughs> but it's spelled with four letters. It's at least a clean four-letter word. All right, then. So those are our products up for grabs. Let's take a look at the Stormer Super 15 squad that's been announced. And as we said, they had opened at, Ham at uh, Horston. Now I'm sure there are a lot of fans out there. Geo Aplon, Ruan Boertas, Kalkberger, Manuel Carizzo, a player from overseas, Nizam Card, Dimitri Katakilis, Pat Salier, Kurt Coleman, Damien Dalende, Jean de Villiers, Jean de Jong, Cheslin Colby, a club rugby player comes in the mix, it's Oli Kebel, we all know about him, Stephen Kitsoff has been there for a while, Jean Klein, club rugby, Stier Colisi, Pat Howard, Tian Limburg, Franz Malerberg, Godlin Masimla, also from club rugby, Sikon Buza Noce, Escaro and Tubene, Reino Extian joins the ranks from club rugby, Reino Elstadt, Dion Fouri, Taz Fuzani is no stranger, but he is still from a club and we're glad to see him in the mix. Nick Groom, Brock Kairos, Alistair from Mark and Dwayne from Milan. Of course, your coach is Alistair Kutsia. But if we look at some of those names there, uh, Manuel Caritza, I'm going to leave him out of the picture. Um, Oli Kebel, he's uh, been playing a lot, but uh, Godlin Masimla, Reino Ekstian and Taz Fuzani and Jean Klein. These are our five club guys that have been pulled in the squad. Good to see the club guys getting an opportunity there. Yes, no, definitely. Uh, it just shows that all the hard work definitely pays off for some of the guys. Um, and they've done very well in the club rugby scene as well, and they de deservedly they've gotten their call-ups now. I see Skalk Berger back in the mix. Yeah, Jean yeah. de Villiers with his kind of leadership. And, uh, but, but sad to have yeah. Eben Etzebedard. Yeah, but I think that, like, the, the youngsters are coming through now. You know, the experience is there. They're getting more... Um, they're more committed, they're more, uh, you know, they're getting the experience more than anything else. And, and just on the youngster side, I mean, you don't have to come on into a team anymore totally on talent. Because if you come into a team that's got a structure and a system, 50% of what you do is just have to learn the new system, the structure, the rest is talent. Yeah. 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 All right, folks, we'll take an ad break. Remember that number that you needed to dial uh, was uh, double three two eight zero at least SMS if you want to win that um, uh, that pre-training, uh, during training, and after training combo pack from Evox. Double three two eight zero. We'll take an ad break. When we come back, we'll catch up with the guys at Tigerberg who had their first opening uh, practice. Fifty six players arrived, and hopefully many others, other clubs end up with the same kind of numbers. Of course, Tigerberg is getting ready for the community challenge. We'll talk about that in the next couple of minutes. Back with you in a sec. Welcome back everybody, Cape Rugby TV, of course, uh, you can catch us every Wednesday at 9 o'clock and of course repeats on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock as well. This year we're looking to bring you tons of excitement. We know that on Facebook many, many of you gave us so many great suggestions about talking to more coaches, talking to more players. Um, school rugby is a little bit difficult, but we're going to try and bring you as much school rugby as we can, when we can. Uh, there were so many great suggestions from you guys, a little segments that you wanted on, on, on training, on gym, on nutrition, on strapping. We're going to try and bring you as much of that as possible. Please keep those suggestions coming in because Cape Rugby TV is here to serve you from a club rugby perspective, which means, of course, we think about the community, we think about the fans, we think about the players, and we think about the administrators. We bring it full circle to make sure that club rugby keeps serving uh, the community because really that's what a club is there for. That's what sport is there for. Okay, so uh, we were out on Monday night at one of the first practices as we asked you on Facebook which teams have started pre-season training and on Monday night the first one that was out there happened to be Tigerberg. Tigerberg so we popped around on uh, Friday night to go and catch up with at least on Monday night to go and catch up uh, with the players as they uh, hit their straps within the first two weeks of January. Didn't wait at all. Let's see what happens at Tigerberg. <laughs> Right, folks, as you can see, we are at Tigerberg. Obviously, the rugby season has started to kick off. It's 2014, and people are more excited about club rugby than they've ever been before. This is exactly what club rugby is about. I've come out to Tigerberg tonight, and uh, from what I understand, there's about 55 players that have rocked up for practice. The rugby uh, first match is only in a couple of weeks' time, but yet the players are here, and they're very excited. Getting their water drinks is the biggest touch rugby game that I've ever seen. 55 players playing touch rugby at exactly the same time. Stick around, we're going to catch up with uh, Tolly, the head coach here at Tigerberg. We'll find out what's happening with the community challenge and, of course, some interesting facts for Tigerberg in 2014. Who was your vacancy? I'm going to get a No, and you are right for the season? Yes, but you are not good for us. En nou, ik weet jullie uit die Community Cup uit, maar hier die nieuwe Community Challenge. Ja, dat is hier waar ons werk en ons, 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 ons alles die we goed doen daar. En zo, so, uh, build up voor de pre-season, ja. Jij is al een, een hele rukkie hier zo bij Tijgerberg. Wat is die soort van sterkpunten waarvoor jullie gaan zoeken? En misschien van die zwakpunten wat jullie wel uit die pech uit krijgen? <laughs> Te vroeg. Ja, het is al een beetje early days, so, ja, als we zien waar ons... We hebben altijd bouwbeschwakpunten van verleden jaar om, om die jaar goed te doen om wel te kwalificeren voor de Community Cup misschien volgend jaar. 
En die nieuwe liga structure, hoe, ja, hoe klink dit? Ja, die nieuwe liga structure, 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 hoe ja, we try. Had some gammon in here, but we still keep on going. And uh, are you excited? Now, good turnout tonight. Yeah, I think there's a good experience and youth here, and the guys are excited for the new season. All right, and uh, 55 guys on the park. Uh, you got the community uh, challenge, and then of course the new league structure is going to be a long season. Yeah. I think there's lots of things to look forward to at the end of the day, and I mean, like with a great bunch of turnout, our crowd, crowd behind us, we can do this. Yeah, I think you can have a great crowd this year. A lot of people are going to come support Tigerburg. Yeah, there's always loyal people here. We can give our best because we know they're always behind us no matter what happens. Right, James, listen, we're going to wish you the best of luck and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks, James. Okay. Man. Okay, folks, this is, of course, the uh, one of the very first games. A lot of the other clubs are busy with pre-season at the moment. It's just started. It's our very first show. Uh, we're going to close off the segment now. Peter Yosa, the... Are you still the president, acting president? Or? No, I'm still president of Tiger Work, <laughs> JP. And uh, obviously, we are grateful that we could have a good start tonight. I think the start training tonight and the turnout is quite good. So we are quite happy about that. And of course, the guys look excited. We just mentioned about three or four times now the community challenge and then the new league structure as well. We'll find out what the numbers look like on Thursday night. Yeah, definitely. I think there's more opportunities for them in the community challenge. And then obviously, they also get a chance to prepare for the league. I think we are in for an exciting league this year. So it's a good start for them. Well, listen, when, like I said to Tolly earlier on, we're not, uh, we're not saying goodbye. We say we'll see you again soon. Yeah, it will be nice having you here and uh, hopefully you can come visit again. Absolutely, absolutely. You're welcome any time of the day or any time of the year. There we go, folks. This is our very first show. Of course, you can see rugby's already started. This is why we started the show so early, because rugby clearly isn't a six-month season anymore. We'll see you guys after the break. Well, we're not going to worry about the break. We're just going to come straight back to Cape Rugby TV. So welcome back. Yes, uh, Tigerberg in the mix already. Um, you guys were saying one of the reasons why do you think there were so many players there yes well like i said um certain clubs are fortunate where they've got members playing in their third team and their second team who have aspirations to still want to play in the first team so it's very competitive and therefore obviously they want to start as early as possible pre-season certain clubs however struggle sometimes where the second teams and the third teams are more social than, than actual very competitive teams so then you've got a problem where you get your turnouts are a bit lower at those clubs because you only got then your first team core that are there from the start and the rest will always fall in afterwards yeah but and you know got I've, I've, got, I've got a problem with that i've got a problem with that because not every team is out there to be super competitive so if you haven't got a sec if, you, if your second and third team is not there because they're ready to compete then you must create an event or a, or a bri place or you know create a party make it more you've got to then shift your focus from the winning and the point stuff to the social stuff to get everybody back to getting fit and healthy and being part of the community no, that's true, and that does happen. Most clubs do do that. Um, obviously, when they start, uh, the first practice is just there to gauge the interest. Wha once you've had that, and now you, you notice, oh, but hold on, we don't have the numbers here, then the clubs normally do those sorts of initiatives. They have those things, like the bra evenings or whatever the case might be, to get the guys there. Also, we, we also have a, a problem where a lot of the clubs still have players playing cricket. It's still part of the cricket season. Ah, no, and really? Yeah. Oh, are you joking? <laughs> hey, how many, how many rugby players play cricket? Although our rugby players <laughs> no, did play get, good. You get quite a few, you get quite a few. <laughs> and, and obviously, you've got those numbers as well. It still need to be coming through to the clubs as well. That's, of course, one of the things you guys have got to violence. So you've got a pretty good cricket side there we've as well. We've got cricket as well that the guys play for a lot of the clubs. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hey, so you played a bit of cricket in your day, right? Yes, back at school, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you were forced to, uh, yeah. I was waiting for him to tell me a Euro cricket story and I didn't fall into that trap. Ryan <laughs> Merrin. <laughs> Ryan Merrin Cricket Club, yeah, the boys go. Anyway, but yeah, that, that was... Um, so we got 56 players there starting and then a lot of the other guys also on Facebook, they started posting and I think we saw... I think 45 odd clubs said that they started their, their first practice on the Tuesday, which of course we didn't get out there, was last night, we didn't have time to get out there. But uh, a good start for Tiger Burg. But one of the things that they're obviously going to be focusing on now is the fact that they're, they're not playing in the Community Cup, but they're playing in the Community Challenge. Sure. Now, a lot of people are not aware of the Community Challenge. We spoke about it last year with Peter Yerster. Um, Danny Jones also touched on it a little bit. The Community Challenge, Faisal, let's talk to you about the Community Challenge. Um, we know that it is, uh, maybe just talk us through it. Yeah, well, the community challenge is something that, you know, Borland and Western Province, you know, we've sat down 
Uh, we've chatted about it to see how we can, you know, engage the clubs, get a bit more interest in that there, and also assist and help the clubs when it comes to the preseason and that. So what we've done is we've looked at our top four clubs that, uh, you know, from Western Province, top four clubs from Poland, and obviously the top four, uh, four clubs that's not, uh, you know, excluding the universities and that. And obviously the, you know, Hamilton's that's competing in the Community Cup. And, you know, these four clubs will play against the top four from Poland. And these are, of course, the top four after you've done your 15-man ranking. Uh, in other words, last year's uh, teams that were promoted and relegated, you sort that out first. Great. You bring up your top five from the Super League B, and that forms your first 15. 15. And we're going to look at that. And, and is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And then you'll take out, obviously, the universities, and you're taking out the Hamiltons, uh, Hamiltons from the Community Cup. Okay. Yeah. And then you've got your third. So you've got... Yeah, you got your fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, seventh. and eighth. Okay, so those are the guys that are going to play against Boerland. How are we how are we going to match up against the Boerland clubs? Uh, we've got uh, we've got them playing on the you know they're playing on the first, we're playing on the eighth, and I think the fifteenth and twenty seconds. Okay, the, an the answer I was looking for was we're going to smash we them. Smash yeah. them. <laughs> we're going to thrash them. All right, okay. So so let's just run through the four clubs that are playing the Community Cup again. It's Tigerberg, Tiger it's Belhar. It's um, Durbanville. Durbanville. Of course, Durbanville did very well last year. It was tight again. And they were did so well again the previous, yeah. the previous and year. SK and SK Warmers. And SK Warmers. Okay, yeah. so SK Warmers, Tigerberg, Belhar, Durbanville. And those are the four clubs that we're going to be following in the Community Challenge to make sure that, that, that we give them as much TV coverage and support as possible. So those, that's going to be very exciting. We've got a couple of teams are going to be competing now. We've got the Varsity teams. We want to follow them. UCT, UWC, and uh, Marty's. Make sure that we support them in the Varsity Cup from a TV point of view. Hamilton's are going to be our only champions in the Community Cup. And then, of course, in the Community Challenge, we'll be following those four teams to make sure that we look off. So we've got, we've got uh, eight, what are we talking about here? Eight teams that we have to get behind from Western Province point of view and make sure that they feel the yes yeah, of Western really. Province. Okay. All right. Um, but also tell, tell us more about the community challenge is the uh, coach of Tigerberg. We caught up with Tolly van der on Monday night. Let's hear what he has to say. It is Cape Rugby TV. It is our very first show of the year. And this is what everybody's been waiting for. Although we didn't have to wait very long because it looked like we had like a three-week break and we're straight back into rugby. With me now is the head coach uh, for Tigerberg, Tolly van der Westhuis. And Tolly, 55 owns this op je eerste dag. Je is zeker happy hier. Tigerberg is baie, baie blij. Zoals je ziet, mis kan niet geloof die seizoen het begin nie. En um, ja, die owns het gekom en um, ons sien baie uit na die seizoen. Vooral met die nieuwe competities en alles, die nieuwe liga. Ik denk dat het gaan interessant is hier jaar. Dus so, dat is eigenlijk twee grote dingen voor jullie op je kaart hier jaar. Dus hier een nieuwe community challenge waar we allemaal naar praat. Als vier clubs van VIP wat daar aan deel neem. Jullie speelt tegen vier clubs tegen die Boerland. Daar is in die uh, einde van februari, begin van maart. Ja, dat is die eerste maart, begin die eerste liga game. Dus so, ons oefen drie keer een week. So, ons het visie is 19 oefeningen voor de eerste wedstrijd begin. En dan, zoals je weet, speel ons Derbel, Belhaar en SK in vier van die topspannen. Nou, stop ons dan gaan goed daar. So, dit is Turbel, dit is SK, Bella en Tigerberg. Dit is die vier van julle wat uh, verweep je in die Community ja. Challenge. En julle speel tegen vier clubs van die Boerland. Ja, die vier clubs van die Boerland is Wooster Villages, Sires, Saldana en Hoosten. Ja, dit, dit is baie interessant. Die, die derde naweek speel al die WP spannen weer thuis. Dan kom al die Boerland spannen weer WP toe. En dan die 15e, um, oh sorry, die 22e maart... Dan speel ons die semis en dan die, um, die 29 is die finals. Nou sê my goed Tolly, um, is daar nog spelers al buiten is wat by Tijgerberg welkom aansluit? Uh, mag Kalle nog? Hulle kan natuurlijk allemaal eens welkom JP, dus hulle noem het ons maar open season op die oomlik. So hulle kan vir my contact, my contact details is op die WP website by, die, by Tijgerberg. En ook Tijgerberg sy eie persoonlijke website. En, um, en is ja. enige van hierdie spelers by een ander club wil aanjoin, kan hulle nog daar nog goed doen? Dan moet hulle ook vir my kom vraag, <laughs> jy weet. En, en soos jy weet, ek is een van die grootste coaches, behalwe Louis, jy weet. So um, ja, dan hulle sy hulle sikkel maar om die weg te kom. Ja, ja, oké, okay, vertel ons bykie um, die... Die passie van die spelers, ek meen, daar is sekele heel wat van die ouwens het gedink oor die community cup, maar op die selde tijd, hulle is hulle, hulle is lus om weer rugby te speel, so ek meen, ons is amper die eerste dag van die werk, vandag, baie mense het eerst op die 15e van weer begin werk, en amal is uh, nogal excited hier hoor. 
So I think as I said, there was a bit of anti-climax to the community cup to go. But to the SMS and the e-post are out going over the community challenge. So it's all the lights are being burned and the flames are being burned and all is going on. So so that's one of the things that we did today. So I think we're more on going to the double digital here. And the other thing is that the new league structure that that Donald has been part of is on three. Groot liggas en dan die kleiner liggas daar onder en dan gaan we die die balikjes trekken om te zien waar wie wie waar speel. Zij willen zeker in Alster, want ik in Lotto gaan winnen. Kom zo, kom eens kijken maar hoe werk hoe werk het. Het onderaanse is wordt het bepaald. En ik denk alle spannen zitten op je te kopen om te horen wie speel weg en wie speel thuis. Obviously gaan het bij belangrijk wie is die thuis games om het te winnen. Zo ons hoop als kralli moeilijke spannen thuis. Wel luister, het lijkt mij. As ons so begin, soos jylle ons vanavond begin, het gaan klapraak weer baie op in dit weer die jaar. So, ek weet, ons gaan nog baie van jylle sien, so gaan jy nou baie sê nie. Ek sê maar liever, so ons sien jy weer binnenkort. Sê, Pie, baie dankie alles wat jylle klapraak weer doen, en jylle is altyd welkom hier by Tijgerberg. So, ja, Tully van der Westa is in there, no stranger to club rugby in Tijgerberg, and he's certainly leading the challenge there. Well, was going to lead the challenge at least uh, for the wild card, but now we know that Tigerberg's not in the mix there. All right, um, so let's quickly look at the, ra the, the, the rankings, the new rankings now, because from this is what's going to determine the league structure, which uh, Tolly sort of touched on there. Now, we've got a slide for you that shows you after promotion and relegation, you'll see here uh, the top 15 in the first uh, league. Uh, there you go, it's uh, Belhar. Belleville, Durbel, False Bay, Marty's UCT, Hamilton, Salderberg, Cows River, NNK, Primrose, SK Wilmers, Vix, Tigerberg, and UWC. Okay, we're going to come back to the slide in a second, but first let me just ask you, how does False Bay come from Super League A, or is that just the team names? Is that in it's ranking? Alph alphabetical. alphabetical. So it's all alphabetical. Okay, so folks, at least we now know that that is alphabetical and it's not a ranking structure. Okay, so just showing you the numbers, it's alphabetical. Let's go back to the slide and we'll see there. Collegians, uh, Brackenfell, Goodwood, Hamil Hamlets, Hands and Hearts, Crowfontaine, Macassar, Milnerton, Peniel, Villages, Rangers, Cotstein, Salarians, St. George's, Villages and Young Peoples make up the second league. And then it's Easter Refier, Elsie Safir, Franz Hook, Langa, Manneberg, Rangers, Northerns, Paul, Wraithby, Silverleaf, Silvertree, Stellenbosch, Coronation, uh, Strand, Strand United, Funnestel and Violet. So those are your three leagues and 15 in each league. Now shortly what's going to happen is we're going to put out a request to you, the public, to help us choose the names of those three Super 15 leagues, if you want to call it that. Could be the Warrior League, could be the Cape Rugby TV League, could be the Super League, could be the Premier League, could be the Champions League. We're going to come up with some names and we're going to ask you, the public, to help us choose the names for these three leagues. So that's going to be quite exciting that you have a participation in terms of those three leagues. And then, of course, Faisal, underneath that structure, we've got the four other divisions, Great. which is the 11 sides divided. So it's another 44 odd remaining clubs that come in from the rest of the structure. Of the rest of the, no, actually, we've got three. Uh, the fourth one is the Paul region. Uh, they obviously they playing on they play on their own. Okay, let's let's quickly have a look at that slide there. We've got a slide here now that will help us also look at those four divisions then. And there you see it. So those are really the other, um, uh, well, there's, what, 34 over there. I'm not going to read all those names. They're from All Saints all the way down to Peninsula. Again, it's in alphabetical order. So um, those are the players that are still going to be uh, getting into those clubs. So just explain to us again. I mean, those are only 34 names there. Yeah. So what will happen is from the 34, they'll be divided into three. So yeah. you'll have 11, 11 in each of the groups and that. And obviously the one group will have 12 in that. And that makes up, uh, you know 30, the 34 that you see on, uh, on the screen and then you've got the pole region which makes up another 12 they obviously you know play amongst themselves so there's no promotion or relegation in that okay, division okay. so we're going to have um, four divisions and including pole including the pole. other three including is going to be a city zone a north zone and a and south, south zone, zone. Okay. So that all your city-based clubs, your north-based clubs, and, yeah. your, and, your in, and that will help them with regards to travelling as well, because they'll all be in the same vicinity. But I think what's also important to know from that is the way we're going to, uh, you know, uh, divide the clubs is going to be based on kilometres distance from Newlands. So what we've done is we've used Newlands as a central base and, you know, det and determine the distance between the, the club and Newlands. And then from that, we determine who goes into what division and uh, what, what pool. Okay, that's of course going to help clubs with transport point of view. Fa more fans from, uh, from two neighbourhoods will be able to go to the same game. I think that's a very smart move because too long, it's been going on for too long, and quite frankly, it's bloody stupid to have a club travel 50 kilometres to go and play against another club and no fans 
can or have the facility to drive through there. Maybe you saw a couple of girlfriends on the side of the field. <laughs> that was it. But, yeah. but this is going to solve the problem. And what, what we're probably going to see here, even though historically we have had clubs who considered themselves to be challenged, as in sort of the nemesis, which created derby days, is this is probably going to evolve into, into many more little derbies taking place. Correct, yeah. I think what's also important to note from that, JP, is one of the positives is that a club in the past, it would take them, you know, probably between seven to eight years to get to the Super League. Now, within a three, four year span, you've got an you know, opportunity, you know, to get there. So it gives the guys more hope, more aspirations than that. There. You know, you might have had a bad season last year, but you've got something to look forward to, you know, from the new season. And that. So essentially, we've got the leagues and we've got the divisions. Yeah. And then we've got the PAR region. And Siemensburg region, and, and of course, which is the farm league, yeah. yes. which is and farm the farm league. league as well. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so we understand now. We've got three leagues. Got to give them a name. We've got three divisions. We've got to give them a name. Then you've got the Paul League, and then of course you've got the Siemensburg region, which is the farm league. All right, so we're now starting to understand this. Okay, so now let, let's run through this. We already know that the clubs don't play each other twice. They only get a chance to play each other once. Oh, All right, so in other words, it's almost like a round robin. You play one, you play the next, you play the next, until you've played 14 games. Yeah, seven home, seven away. Seven home, seven away. Yeah. Okay, seven home, seven away, but you're still play, only playing against each, each club once. once. Yeah. Yeah. What happens at the end once you've played your 14 games? So what happens is at the end, you know, that, that, the, that competition will be determined, the promotion and relegation and that thing. So once you've determined you have promotion and relegations, the next step in them will okay, be... Okay, let me stop you. How many teams get promoted? How many teams get relegated? Okay. In the, the top three divisions, you'll have uh, three teams. We're talking about those top three leagues now, the ones with the 15s. Leagues, yep. You'll have your, your, the two teams automatically promotion, and uh, the third side will then have a playoff against the number three, uh, number three side coming up. So in other words, in, in the A division, three teams will go, uh, three teams, uh, go down, okay? but then number three, number, uh, what is it? number 13 will play against number three from the pre division coming up. So is it, is it, in, in summary, is it fair to say that, the, that there's a, a, a six? Am, am I right? It's three from the, from the, the bottom, the, the division that's, so you got your first league and your second league. Yeah. Three from three. the first league are going to play against three from the, the second league. No, 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 automatically, no. Automatically, automatically there will be two promoted. Yeah. So let's just say, for so example... So you first get promoted and then you play one, for a playoff. One, no, 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 the one third and two. team. Okay, well what happens is you get your top three that ends after the 14 games are played. So now you get um, Division 2, for example, you get your top three teams. Yeah. The top two automatically get promotion. Right. But the team that ends third has a playoff against the team that ends 13th in the division above him. So, so in other only words, one playoff? 14 and only 15 automatically get relegated and yeah. 1 and 2 automatically go up. Okay. But then what happens is 13 has a playoff with three to see if they can remain in the league or if three then goes into that league as well. Okay, so only one team will shift up and one team will shift down? Two. No, two go up and two go down. No, no, but I mean on the playoff. Yeah, yeah the playoff, yeah. So playoff three will, there's going to be a move, possible movement of three, of three, a minimum of two. Correct. Yeah. That's so correct. two are going to go up, two are going to go down, that's correct. guaranteed. That's and then there's opportunity for one more team to shift up or down correct. if they win. Yeah. Yes. So if they don't win, they say for example win. the, the lower, the lower the league, then it stays where yeah. it is, and you just have your two up, two down, as yeah. normal. But then, All right. obviously, you've got three divisions. So in the third division, it's automatically a relegation, and three teams go down. Then from the regions that we spoke about, the, that Northern Sun and the, um, the City the city League, you'll have those teams playing. So after the first round, there's 11 teams that are competing in those groups. So once they've played 10 matches, the top three teams from each of those uh, regions will form a new group. So you'll have nine teams playing against each other for eight matches. Of which three will be promoted. Of which the three. The top three on that division will automatically They'll be promoted, promoted into the third league. Third, third league, league. So there's, okay. no, there's no, uh, okay. no play. No so we've got kind of a knockout stage there yeah. for nine clubs that will play against each other, which is the top three in each division. If I put this not the Par League and not the Simons, but just the three divisions. So we've got Correct. three at the top, three at the bottom. We're talking about the three divisions, which you call the City League. Yeah. And those three will form a nine team knockout stage Correct. and the top three out of that nine will be promoted, promoted. into the third yeah. league yeah. Yeah. But okay. it won't be a am i right it won't be a nine okay, team okay. knockout stage it'll be a nine team league league, yeah. league. so you'll play in eight, eight extra games there yeah. okay okay so now and, and and of course uh, are there any knockouts within the leagues itself um, or is it just a, by the end of the season if after, you're the initial, after the initial competition. Okay, so yeah. there's no, no lock, knockout there's games no knockout. there. Yeah. Once you've played your 14 games, if you're at the top, you win. Yeah. 
query. Okay, you knew the top. Okay, right, folks. We hope we're going to keep drumming this through because it is quite a complicated process, and we need everybody to understand the system. In other words, for us to get behind it as a fan, because as a fan, you want to know how you plot this. All right. We're also looking at bringing out some documentation for you that uh, illustrates the league positions, the log points, and so on that we can hand out at the club. So Cape Rugby TV will be looking towards handing out some uh, pamphlets and flyers that just hands uh, give that out to the fans out there, that people can kind of work out the new league structure. That's going to be very exciting. We're looking for, for to disseminate um, documentation at club level, especially where the Cape Rugby TV games are going. And we're looking, really looking forward from a Cape Rugby TV point of view to cover some of those little derby matches. Um, going to be extremely exciting. I think it's going to be a great new venture. So a lot of people uh, are excited about this just because it's different. Yeah. Eh? I mean, would you guys agree? Yes, no, definitely. definitely. I think yeah. it's long overdue and that there, and I think it's something you know for the guys to look forward to. Yeah. It opens up the competition. No, very exciting. Okay, folks, we're going to take an ad break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at some of the other, um, call it admin stuff, uh, the referees' courses and other activities that are happening in and around Western Province Rugby, and then, of course, we'll uh, take a quick uh, summary of the entire uh, rugby season for 2014, who plays what, where, and when. Be back with you in a sec. Cape Rugby TV every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock and again a repeat on Saturday at 9 o'clock. Remember we are on DSTV. Tell your friends channel 263 if you're not watching on DSTV right now. And remember you can find us on Facebook www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Alternatively on Twitter at Cape Rugby TV and uh, of course during the season you can hashtag hash WP Club Rugby and keep that back channel going. It's going to be extremely exciting. One of the big things that's coming up right now is of course the administration side that's happening in, in Western Province right now and you want to get your coaches sorted out. There's two coaches of course is coming up. Let's take a look at the dates there. On the 25th of January, Saturday, from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock, it's in Paul. You can wear anything you want, pretty much a tracksuit and shorts. It costs you 250 bucks. The closing date for entries there is on the 17th of January. Then on the 7th of February, on Friday, from 1 o'clock through to 8 o'clock at Brookside and Villages, tracksuit shorts, 250 bucks. And the closing date for entries there is the 31st of January. So you've got about two weeks to enter there. Minimum of 30 and a maximum of 40 coaches per course. Let's quickly touch on that, Riaz. You were mentioning to me that um, if you were to play in a school game, um, and you don't have a, have your own referee, it costs you 150 bucks. Yes, you need to go to the union and inform them that they need to send a registered referee mm. and you would have to pay that referee 150 rand, which is the rate for a Saturday for the under-19 game. Um, you but now, if, yeah. if, if I'm a club yeah. um, and I send my own referee, it's going to cost me the club, the club pays for it, mm. it's going to cost me 250 bucks. Yeah, for the course, okay. if you send them to Can the I then use my own referee to match my uh, own games? That's correct. Your own games for your under-19s, then you can tell the union you don't need to send a referee. We have our own referee, registered referee. So you can save yourself a lot of money? Yes, yeah. over the course of a season, you can save yourself a lot of money. I think it also helps out, JP, in the pre-season, especially with the clubs and that there. Um, like Rio says now, you've got to have a qualified, accredited referee, you know, refereeing your match and that there. So it'll make more sense to send a referee, you know, so to sort of to cover that cost. Okay, just a quick question, Faison. I know that we've been on this, uh, and then I'm going to go quickly to the summary of the season, then we're going to wrap it up. Um, are you allowed to play rugby if you don't have box smart? Uh, you are you allowed you to coach? Can, you, can, you, can, you can play. You can play, but you can't coach. coach. And, okay. Uh, obviously, from coach and referee as well. So you need to be box smart accredited to coach and to All right. referee. Are you allowed to put on a rugby match if you don't have medical facilities? No. no. Uh, what are the other kind of cri key criteria that you must have if you want to play rugby? Uh, the field must be marked to proper specifications, must okay. be clearly marked. Yep. Um, the space between the field and your security fencing, for example, must be a certain distance. Yep. It can't be too close to the field. If um, you're a player, here's a, a quick question. If you're a player and you don't have a card, are you allowed to play? During the season, you're not allowed to play. You okay. need to have a player's so card. So part of your registration process also is to make sure that every player in Western Bronze Rugby has a player's, player's card. card. Okay, so that's one of the things that uh, kind of we don't see on the side of the field. It's not being regulated very well. I'll be honest with you, yeah, I know that maybe you don't like to hear it, yeah. but I'm going to tell you straight up, often we go to the field and we know that the players don't have their cards. Is that a rule? That's definitely something you know, that the clubs and obviously from the union side we take seriously in that there. And yeah. you know, with injuries and you know, people being injured in that there and underage players in that there, that is one of our ways in checking and making sure that you know, players are legal, that they can take to the yeah. field. And of course you can't smuggle your way around that card no. because you've got a photograph on the card. Yeah. 
Yeah, right. Let's quickly take a look at the season summary. There, you'll see it on the slide uh, right now. And as you can see, the color codes there. The Super 15 is going to take you pretty much from February through to August. Vodacom Cup happens at the same time. So there's two overlapping, three, four, five, six overlapping tournaments there being the Super 15, the Vodacom Cup, the Varsity Cup, the Community Cup overlaps starting in March and uh, finishing in April. The Community Challenge also overlaps. And then, of course, the uh, Club League starts in April. But don't forget the 7s and the 10s that are happening at the same time. So there you see that's pretty much how the season flows over. So if you look, for example, let's quickly go back to that slide there, but if you look, for example, at a, at a um, period like um, March and April, we literally have Super 15, Vodacom Cup, Varsity Cup, Community Cup, Community Challenge, as well um, as the uh, club league structure. So we almost have seven or eight different leagues and tournaments and structures that we are able to talk about. And you can catch it all right here on Cape Rugby TV. And remember then, get your registrations in then for those club coaches send them through to how do you how do people register for the courses for the, uh, the courses the you can contact the uh, you know, contact the office um, the numbers are there you can try contact mr benteron he's in charge of the referees and that there or otherwise email us uh, you can email uh, myself mm. and we will gladly obviously forward it to relevant people all right there we go folks thank you very much for joining us on cab rugby tv as we said we'll be back again next week same time same place Rios, uh very best of luck to you guys on thursday night this is tomorrow night we're doing the draw the draw ping pong balls and we'll see who's going yeah. to be the rankings <laughs> right yeah. it's going to be yes the leagues are going to be um, totally different it's not going to work on the ranking system of the year before it's going to be randomly chosen Three. where the where the fixtures and where the clubs end up in the leagues so don't expect that if you ended up um, third in premier league a for example that you're going to be third now in the league again it's going to change. The fixtures are going to change according to the draw, the, the random draw. Yeah, it's we're going, going to play a lot of draw there. We're going to play ping pong balls. We're going to draw ping pong balls. It's going to be like the FIFA World yeah. Cup draw. Yeah. And <laughs> number one, number one. Yeah. All right, Faisal, thanks for joining us. It's a long Thank time. You, Great to have you on the show from an administrative point of view. Thanks. You know, we, we can't operate rugby without the administration side being right. And we know that you work your fingers to the bone Monday through to Sunday, <laughs> as we all know. And yeah, thanks for joining us. And hopefully we'll have you on the show more often to tell us about the ins and outs of, of administration. I think especially now before the season starts. So it was lucky having you. Thanks a lot, JP, and it's good to be here. And definitely I will be back. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. There you go, folks. Cape Rugby TV, Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock. Remember the repeat on Saturday if you missed it today. You can, of course, uh, if you've got a PVR, record the show. Just send it to the record and then you've always got it. Remember Facebook, www.facebook.com. Forward slash Cape Rugby TV, alternatively on Twitter at Cape Rugby TV. Have a fantastic, safe rugby weekend, and again, we'll see you next week at the Strand Sevens, uh, Strand Pioneers, when the Cape Rugby TV Sevens team takes to the field, and we're going to really have some good fun there. We'll see you guys. Bye bye.